Wait. Go to the mid. Go, go to the mid. Welcome to Man of All I am not. I am not in the greatest of, of buzzes right now. But that doesn't stop me from recording before. I mean, <laughs> nothing's really stopped me from recording before. It, let's begin. Oh, oh yeah, Mukuro, but the, I will make a transition between actual Mukuro and Junko fired Mukuro at some point. But for now, it'll be Junko Mukuro, sort of Junko, Junkuro. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Huh? Ta okay, I would, I would have pushed. Huh? Time certainly stopped for Mukuro because so, wait, she's still in the chunk. Right, I need to figure this out quick. Give a second. Huh? Time certainly stopped for Mukuro Ikusaba. As if. It was as if everything around her had frozen perfectly still. In the past, she was known as the ultimate soldier. She had experienced this feeling before, during her time with a mercenary group Fender. In situations where she was surrounded by a hopeless number of enemies within a jungle or in a desert ruin. The changing enemies seemed as though they were frozen in time, which allowed her to claim a decisive victory in all her battles. But this wasn't a battlefield, so why did this familiar sensation activate once again? In order to understand what had happened, Mukuro slowly tried to assess the current situation from within the frozen world. Junko and Mukuro are both children of despair, but Junko and Ashima, the true ultimate despair, harbors far deeper darkness within her. Though their last names are different, Mukuro is Junko's older sister, connected by the bonds of blood. She cooperated with Junko's hopeless plan and impersonated her under the pretense of participating in the killing game alongside her classmates. According to the plan, Mukuro was supposed to oppose Monokuma, who her sister was controlling, and be locked in a dungeon as punishment. Isolated from the others, she would then escape the dungeon and perform various acts intended to deprive the students of hope. That was her role that she had been assigned. When Makoto succumbed to his headache, Chunko ordered her to see if the shock had caused him to remember anything could make him a liability. He woke up as she was tending to him, so she made small talk with him, but she didn't notice any change in his behavior. Until this point, she was certain that there shouldn't be any problems. You should have been suspicious when, when Makoto was like, are you sure we haven't met before? Oh well, we probably not. Nothing could possibly go wrong. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, five words before everything goes to shit. We can own a bar. One, two, three, four, five. We can own a bar. Kick him in the dick. Kick him in the dick. You can say five words for everything goes to shit. She stomped on Manakuma like her sister ordered her to, and flawlessly spoke the lines she was taught to memorize. Afterward, she would fall through the trap door in the dungeon, into the dungeon, and remain isolated from the other students. That was her role. She hadn't done anything wrong. There were no problems. Sure, sure. Ah, uh, the 20,000 spears over there are no problems. It's just going to pretend like nothing happened. Nothing happened. Stay in the delusion, Mukuro. You killed it that way. There were no problems. She repeated that to herself over and over like a silent prayer. But in that frozen moment in time, what she saw was not a trap door, but countless spears. One of them had skewed Makoto through his side. Why? Makoto? Why are these spears? Going there? I would have died if I hadn't moved. Did Junko mess up the plan? No. Junko would never mess up. Was she trying to kill me? Me. Makoto saved me. Why? Why did he say my name? Did his memories come back? Did I not realize that? Did I make a mistake? Is that why Junko got angry? Is this punishment? Is it my fault? Junko tried to kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Slowly, time came back to a world. Mukuro could feel her face turning pale as she slowly looked toward Makoto. The student's scream rang throughout the gym. Saiko was probably the first one to scream, 
Psycho is screaming with joy at the fact that he finally got stabbed. I don't know when I'm going to stop. I feel like I should stop. Like I should just like, right, Psycho's not bad. She doesn't have carry a knife on her all the time. Look, Yandere's and I is going to go hand in hand. And yes, many people like Sayaka, but Sayaka likes knives. Women plus knife, 65% of the time equals Yandere. When love is involved. And love is involved, or crushes, so up there by another 10%, we got 75% chance of Sayaka being Yandere. But who screamed first didn't matter to Mukuro. Makoto. Why? Makoto was the ultimate lucky student. He had been a classmate for the past two years, and now he was a sacrifice to despair. Not long ago, he had given her an answer of sorts during their conversation in the nurse's office. He was just a pawn in a plan her sister had devised. But now, a feeling of doubt began forming in Mukuro's mind. I... What did I want from Makoto? As her heart churned restlessly, she continued to think. In... In... Oh wait, this is the... In return, I promise that if I do decide to kill someone, it won't be you. Was... I... Impersonating Junko then? Or... Did I really mean that? When did I start feeling this... Doubt? Just now? The moment he saved me? Or... When we spoke in the nurse's office earlier? Or when I first confronted him about this killing game? Before his memories had returned? Or was it before even that? Mukuro stood there confused and overwhelmed. As Makoto slowly opened his eyes, the spear still impaling him to the side. Ah, uh, Mukuro? Makoto? Are you okay? Mukuro was no longer impersonating ultimate fashionista. Looking up from the floor of the gym, Makoto asked, Why? Oh, uh, you dressed up like Junko. He was smiling. Maybe he couldn't feel the pain anymore. Or maybe he was being affected by something else. Maybe it was love, or maybe it was Maybelline, that meme is all. But regardless, Makoto ignored the fact that he was dying, just to give Mokuro his warm smile. I'm glad. I'm glad you're safe, Mokuro. As soon as she heard Makoto's weak fading voice, something inside Mokuro snapped. From within the shell of despair, she had built up an intense emotion began flowing out. No, this is all wrong. She couldn't hold back that emotion any longer. No. No. And for the first time in her entire life, Mukuro unleashed a scream into the world. Yeah, I'm not screaming right now, so deranged woman scream. Find a good part, part of it. As Mukuro fell to her knees and clutched her head, a small shadow started walking toward her back. The stuffed animal that had been under her foot, Monokuma. His claws were extended. He was no longer walking with his usual waddle. Instead, he moved like a beast, silently stalking his prey as he slowly advanced with his within his target's blind spot. As he inched closer to Mukuro, Monokuma raised his razor-sharp claws, crouched on his haunches, and tripped and fell flat on his face like he would usually at this time, but unfortunately it's too serious of a moment for that. You are mistaken. And suddenly left towards the back of her neck. However, just because this claws, claw, claws could reach the paralyzed Mukuro, a dark shadow moved in the side and swatted his claws away within one within away with one blow. His lunge deflected, Monokuma was sent flying through the air, spinning wildly, wildly, before crashing to the wall. Um guessing Sakura? Damn you! What are you trying to do? Sakura Ogami, the ultimate martial artist, had just prevented another tragedy. She stood before Monokuma and addressed him in a loud, booming voice. Not only did you attempt to kill Junko for violating the school regulations, you even attacked Mukodo, who had nothing to do with this. If your plan is to continue acting in such a savage manner, there's no reason for us to play along with your game. Bi Byakya Togami, the ultimate of fluent progeny, smug, condescendingly at Sakura. Fool. One could say you've now violated the school regulations with your senseless actions. He looked as if he honestly did not care if his fellow student lived or died at all. Um. Well, she merely deflected the headmaster's attack just now, so I don't think it truly counts as an act of violence. Like Byakuya, Celeste seemed unfazed as she chided him of his words. However, the banter between the two was enough to stir the stunned student's interaction. 
in the Kahuta? Saika was the first one to run towards Makoto, who lay bleeding from his stomach. You know what I want to say at this moment? Just, just, just imagine I said it. Imagine I said it and I'm not trying to hold myself back from turning Sayaka into an utter yandere. But Monokuma stopped her, shouting in a tone of voice that seemed completely out of character. Be careful! Don't get too close to those two! Huh? Start by Monokuma's desperate tone, Sayaka and the others stopped moving almost instinctively. The students looked around at each other. Instead of his usual playful gait, Morikuma walked towards them with deliberate methodical steps. And then, he suddenly blurted out something that took everyone, including Mukuroko Saba, by surprise. I'm sure you're probably confused with the sudden turn of events, but I want you guys to work together. As Mukuro slowly turned her head towards Monokuma, he pointed her and yelled, Mukuroko Saba and her accomplice, Makoto Naiki, are the terrorists responsible for locking you all inside the academy. My question is, right, for pulling things out of your ass randomly, that is probably the dumbest that you could have done so without everybody already being suspicious of each other. So, no one had any reason to suspect anybody, right? There's no deaths. And now all of a sudden you want to be like, BAM! They did it, they did it, they did it, they did it, like the bear. The bear isn't the mastermind in the situation. Like, you don't exist. You, you literally try to take yourself out of the equation. But you're still standing in front of everybody. That don't make sense, man. That don't make sense. Once again, time stopped for Mukuro. But this time, she wasn't the only one affected. Everyone seemed to be frozen in shock. After a few seconds of silence, Aya Sayina, the ultimate swimming, swimming pro, spoke first. Huh? You're kidding, right? I mean, Makoto is a terrorist? <laughs> That's impossible. Common sense, Ayasina. Is sort of known for her stu stupidly accurate common sense. Hey, who's Mukuro anyway? I mean, that's Junko. Monokimo began slowly explaining to Aoi. The real Junko must be in prison somewhere in this school. Then, if that's the case, Who's the bear who told us to kill each other? Who's the bear? Like, dude, you, you could have had, you could have taken a step back, let them discuss it out, and like, take a deep breath in, plan the shit out, or how you could have gotten them back, get everybody to trust each other, get it, BAM! Throw some images like of them hanging out together or whatever to show or prove, etc, uh, etc. Et Worst case scenario, she might be killed. Mukuro must have researched which one of you would be easiest for her to impersonate and hid among you by all by pretending to be her. She was probably trying to make sure the killing game went smoothly. Suddenly, Monokuma's hands and feet began jerking in an awkward motion as he looked at the other students and introduced himself. I'm Peshiki Midarai. Uh, what? I'm Peshiki Midarai. Madarai. The ultimate hacker. I'm your upperclassman. I hacked into the academy from the outside, and I was finally able to take control of Monokuma's body just a little while ago. Take control? From who? From the head of the terrorist organization that's controlling his robot from the outside. Oh, so it's, it's Mukuro. What? What are you saying, Junko? Mukuro trembled as she heard the words coming out of Monokuma's mouth. For a brief moment, she clung into the hope that her sister wasn't trying to kill her. But as soon as that hope was born, it was immediately consumed by despair. Junko had the power to transform hope into despair. She would never let anyone hack her that easily. There was only one explanation. Junko Enoshima was pretending to be someone named Beshiki in order to frame Mukuro and Makoto. But it's as though Junko was using Mukuro's survival as a branching path to lead the other students to a different despair. Monokuma continued talking, telling the students more lies designed to prod them into action. On your first day at OC Academy, you guys were exposed to a sleeping gas, knocked unconscious, and taken hostage. Makuro and Makoto are probably the only operatives that the terrorists said inside the school. That means they probably know how to escape from here. And then Monokuma turned to face Mukuro. Mukuro Ikosawa was a member of a mercenary group called Fenrir. She's a wanted criminal who killed over 10 people associated with the school. So don't get soft, they think you can capture her alive. In fact, that's exactly what cops told me. So the moment I saw an opening, I tried hacking the trap. 
the top? They say they tried to kill her. Oh. What about Makuru? Monokuma gave a cold, emotionless answer to Sayaka's question. My guess is that neither the other my lucky student didn't stand a chance of defying a group like Finger. He was probably threatened by forced to cooperate before you entered the school. Or judging from early actions, maybe Mukuro seduced him. Or you're dumb. Because the we already got a DVD is from our first motive, right? That already disproves everything you just said. Because why would he kidnap and destroy his own family then? Why would he be panicking on that night type of thing? You know? Just a thought. Just a thought. Saika's face went pale when she heard that answer. And she immediately stopped talking. And she started preparing to sharpen her knives. Started preparing. Like, Shh. <laughs> if I could have Makoto, no one will. Psycho was screaming with joy at the fact that he finally got stabbed. I don't know when I'm going to stop. I feel like I should stop. Like I should just like, right, Psycho's not bad. She doesn't have carry a knife on her all the time. Look, Yandere's and I is going to go hand in hand. And yes, many people like Sayaka, but Sayaka likes knives. Women plus knives. 65% of the time, it's all the